Yeah. That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a Notre Dame makes history. They have booked themselves a home playoff game in South Bend, Indiana on December 20th or 21st against an opponent to be named later. They actually did it in addition to the Always Irish Show. As always, thanks for being here. You can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't. I appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. I just got done with the three and a half hour live calling show. If my voice is struggling. That's why three and a half hours taking the calls. It warmed my heart, you guys. It warmed my heart, man. Everybody uh, just, everybody's happy. Everybody's, uh, some people are drinking. Everybody's in a good mood. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing to hear from the people. Twitter, search bar, always Irish, rat, always Irish. Hey, emails, always Irish, Andy at gmail.com. Audio only, anywhere you want it, you can get it. If you don't want to see my face, nobody blames you for that. Call in lines, man, they're they're popping. 312-988-15, dial it up, tell Uncle Johnny all you heard and seen. Notre Dame Fighting Irish brought to you by Sports Illustrated. Read all about it, folks. When I'm done with this video, I'm going to be writing all night. I'm going to be writing all night. Patreon.com slash always Irish. He's a former captain. He's a leading tackler. It's Mike Goolsby, myself, and another Notre Dameer, Jared Clark, breaking it all down. You got to jump in now. We're in the playoffs. Everything's on the line. Come on by that paywall. Let's go, baby. Thanks to everybody who's already there. All right. It's just a big exhale, man. It's a big exhale. This team had its playoff backs against the wall from week two on in playoff elimination game scenarios. And they kicked the crap out of everybody and won all the games and moved their way back, not only into the playoff, but into a hosting game in South Bend. That's as good as you could ask. It's as good as you could ask. This is the ultimate redemption story. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. You have the redemption of the team and Freeman, and that all coming full circle. Christian Gray, individually, I feel like had a redemption story in this ball game. He got picked on, did not have a great game until he made a game-changing play. There's some synergy there with that year and the redemption it's been, and with what happened with him today, too. Um, I got to tell you, man, uh, I'm really, really happy for Marcus Freeman. Um, he, it has not been an easy journey and, and you're learning on the big stage and every mistake's amplified. This is Notre Dame. Everybody's seeing everything you do. There's been off the field stuff beyond his control. That's frustrating. He's handled it all the right way. He works so hard for Notre Dame and treats people the right way. And in a industry full of snakes, he's a good guy doing it the right way. I want to see a guy like that be rewarded, and, and he was tonight. He was tonight. I am so happy and proud of Marcus Freeman. Now, what this means for an extension, I don't know. Ohio State and a fire Ryan Day, try and get Marcus. Like, I don't know, the NFL report last week. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know. Maybe this is enough that you got to have a discussion between Pete and him and go, hey, how about 10 years instead of six? With This seems to be going well. I don't know. Or maybe Bavacqua wants him to win a playoff game. I don't know. But I do know that this was a big, big feather in Freeman's coaching cap. Year three, all that history, all that pressure, a schedule not that tough. You must take advantage of it. You had to take advantage of it. And they did. And they made it hard on themselves, too. Made it hard on themselves. Speaking of Northern Illinois, by the way, could you legitimately make the argument now that Northern Illinois was the best thing that could happen to this team and this program and this coach? I went into the game sarcastically saying and writing, you know, if they win it, you then, then I'll say, you know what, thank God for that Northern Illinois. And if they lose it, I'm going to go, that's your second loss you couldn't afford to have because of Northern Illinois, and now you're out, and everybody's miserable. Can you now say that was a turning point, and as much as it hurt us and hurt Marcus, he's 
It hurt him so much. He's got a, a miniature low light reel playing in the practice facility the rest of the year for everybody to see how they failed and to never, ever, ever let it happen again. I'm happy for Marcus. I'm happy for these players. They have fought through the injury. They fought through doubters. They fought through they fought through haters. Like there were so many parts of this year where they could have just rolled over. If it wasn't after Northern, it could have been after all that that stretch where everybody was getting hurt. You could have just said, "This just ain't our year," and rolled over. It never happened. It never happened. And that's a credit to the players on this team, the player leadership on this team, and the coaching staff and Marcus Freeman. Something I think we can all agree on is this team has a little bit of a different attitude to it. It is flawed physically in certain areas that we'll discuss and that need to be discussed in the next three weeks. I just don't think it has to be on the night where we're the happiest we've been in like 30 years but I'm still going to mention some things I don't like. Just, you got to be fair, but we'll do that later. We'll do that later. I'm just happy for Marcus. I'm happy for these players. They fought back. They're playing at a different level. They're playing tuned up a little bit. They got a, a, a an attitude about them, but not too much. And they back it up. There's just something there. And I'm happy for the fans and the media that, you know, the media that do their best to cover the team and it helps if they're good once in a while uh, and, and doing that and, and the fans that are so loyal and they're always there, whether it's good or bad. So many people care so much about this football operation and university, man. And it runs so much deeper than just a football game. And as I said on the Colin show, you know, I started out by saying, Everybody here on this call-in show and on this chat can think of somebody they wish was here to celebrate this with them, whether it's your dad, your grandpa, your friend, whoever it is, it's no longer here. If you love Notre Dame, I'm sure you got somebody in mind. This is one of those rare nights where those, you know, you you think about those people and you go, damn, I wish they were here for this one. Right. And so this is a very, very, it's a special night. It's a special night. And so there's a couple different projects here, you guys. Project one was after week two, you have no margin. You have no leeway. You got to win all your games. That is like before you could worry that much about anything, you had to focus on that. And they did that. Now you got to try and get healthy. And then you got to just see who you play and what this bracket stuff ends up being like. I'm not smart enough to know, oh, this team, that team, and then we play this team and we move here and they move there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else, what the possibilities are. But um, I, I don't know. We're in new territory. I just, I kind of hope it's a warm weather team that doesn't want to come play in South Bend that time of the year. That's what I'm open for. Um, but that's a whole different. Now you could get greedy. Like you had to worry about getting in and checking that box. Now you could get greedy. Now you could say, yeah, Notre Dame's a flawed team, but I see flawed teams every week all over the place. Sometimes they win. Sometimes they lose. I see them all over. Teams that have great talent are flawed teams. Ohio State lost today. Georgia doesn't look great. Like, and I consider those two the best rosters in the sport. They look vulnerable at times. So. Once you're in it, you could get greedy. Get a couple good seeds in the first two rounds of this bracket. Win your home game in the Colt. Go on a run. Now you could get, now that you cleared this hurdle, you can get greedy. You're allowed. You're fully allowed to get greedy now. That's what this is all about. Peaking at the right time and winning these games. Here's some things I want to think about. I want to think about where Notre Dame needs to get better to be in a better position in three and a half weeks or whatever. And I need this staff to figure certain things out between now and then. Kicking game, you still got a huge problem. 
Can't get enough unfiltered Notre Dame football talk? Be sure to go over to patreon.com slash always Irish. Former captain Mike Goolsby and myself. Do that. Screw it. Oh, we never won anything. It's been 30 years. And I don't know if three weeks solves that or not. And again, I'm not trying to be negative. This is the time to be happy. This is the weekend to be happy. But I have an obligation to also talk about Notre Dame didn't dominate all of this game, and it was back and forth. And there's some things you saw with the way Notre Dame played you have not been seeing happening lately on the negative end. And it looked to me at times like maybe Notre Dame got used to not playing the best competition for about 11 weeks in a row. And the reason I think it looked that way is because I think that's exactly what happened. So then you had to adjust to the speed and athleticism of a real roster with outside talent and whatever. And um, it wasn't the easiest road for Notre Dame. You overcome it. You made the plays you had to make and you got it. Like the pick sixes, you guys, listen, so many, so many years of my Notre Dame life were on the receiving end of the bad play that cost us the season in the biggest game or whatever, or you do some comeback and fall short, whatever it is. We were the team making the plays you need to make to win the game. And I got to tell you, USC played their asses off. Those guys did not quit. They were fired up. They didn't give no craps about their handful of losses. They were fired up and they came to play. So I got to give them credit there. That quarterback, he threw a bunch of balls and just dropped them only where their guy could get them. And they're great athletes. It was so annoying. It's just. Listen, I don't like the field goal stuff. I didn't think the defense was as sharp. I didn't think you were getting a lot of pressure up front. That's a concern. You weren't getting after the quarterback up front. That's a problem a little bit. I don't like love getting hurt. Hopefully that's something over three weeks. He comes back fine. The run defense at times was not great. Like, I don't know. You you lost the turnover battle. Like, you can... Or you are going to lose a turnover battle. Like, I, like with the, up until you did what you did to end the game, you were, that turnover battle is why that was a game. It's because you were losing it. So I'm not going to misspeak and say we lost it. I'm just saying the reason it came down to us needing pick sixes at the end is because uncharacteristically, Notre Dame was losing the turnover battle up till that point. Um, and they had been the number one team in that category in favoring them up until then. So it was an uncharacteristically poor night for Notre Dame in that regard early. They balanced it out later. But everybody had almost gone, yeah, you miss a chip shot field goal and you have those silly turnovers and you're giving up some some uncharacteristic chunk plays on defense. Yeah, that's how you lose on the road. And they did it's just nice to have some highlights that aren't on a VHS tape from the rocket in, in you know, in 89. Right? I remember the VHS tape I always used to watch of the 89 season and him running the two kicks back at the big house and stuff on the grainy VHS. Look like the Kennedy film. Not me, the other one. The Zapruder film. Anyways, listen. <clears throat> Maybe. In the way we look at Northern Illinois being eye-opening a little bit, maybe this game could be a turning point in a in a little bit of a um, maybe like a reminder that you're gonna face teams with better talent than you face those uh, ten games in a row or whatever. Like maybe this was a good reminder of like there were some plays where USC whipped us or or. There was a lot of plays where Riley called a better offense play than we called the defensive call for it. Like they got athletes. Maybe, maybe it's a good thing that this wasn't some easy walk by blowout situation. And it and it makes Notre Dame refocus again in a different way about what they need to get better at. There are some things in this game that will make you. in certain matchups, not love it in the playoff or whatever. There were some things here that would make you have some anxiety. 
but every team seems flawed this year, man. Even these teams with great rosters seem flawed. It's just, I think it's one of those years, catch a good seed in a good bracket, get a home game, get hot, and just like, I just think it's one of those years where whoever gets on a heater and has a good run in the bracket is going to have a chance. Why can't it be us? Why can't it be us? And so, listen, you guys, this is Notre Dame history. And when, and more history can be made. Like, that's the thing. It's not over. It's not complete or whatever. It's just, this is Notre Dame history. Just accomplishing this, getting this far. Having this home game in South Bend is going in the history books of Notre Dame football. That on its own is an accomplishment. Now you got to get greedy and really, really try and ramp this up. Um, I want to look at a couple stats. Riley Leonard, 17 to 22, 155, two touchdowns, one interception. Yet 12 carries for 50 yards. Those were big, you know, like the passing numbers, not gaudy. Price, I haven't, I, I just, I think Love's going to be okay, but I need him to be okay. How about this, though? USC, 360 passing, almost 200 rushing. Are you going to call that a bad day for Notre Dame's defense? Like, are you going to call that a bad day? Like, that? those are not Notre Dame's defense, like, usual numbers they've been putting up, man. Oh, boy. Like, so, just kind of a weird game statistically. I think this was, I, I really did feel like there was a little bit of, uh, oh, this is what it looks like when you play real athletes on the other side. I felt like there was some of that going on. Uh, I genuinely did. Um, man, so I, but, but look at Notre Dame over here rushing, 258 rushing. That's a good day at the office, man. That's a good day at the office. So, listen, it's hard to play out there. It's hard to win out there. You know, in a lot of ways, they didn't have anything going for him, anything to lose. You had everything to lose. God bless Tyler Buckner. Glad he got to make a play in this type of moment, this kind of ball game. Balls he caught worked out. Um, I'm just so happy for everybody involved in this. This is a big night for the university. Changes a lot of things uh, for Marcus and this football program. And um, this this is about to get really exciting. Uh, I'm so happy for everybody involved and hearing all the people call in. I miss my dad. I wish my dad was here from this. You know, my grandpa, my brother, like all these people I had people they love, they love Notre Dame that are no longer with us. And it's just, it's truly one of those nights where it's good to be Irish. Um, so listen, you guys, party it up, enjoy it, have fun, take the rest of the weekend. Like, don't worry about the things that need to get cleaned up for, like, don't not celebrate this because we can't make a field goal. Like, we'll worry about that. But geez, man, all the years of suffering, all the years our season ends before the last game of the year and all that. It's different this time. I've been asking what Notre Dame coach and group of players are going to change all this. And I'm so, so proud of them. And I'm happy for everybody involved, including us. God bless you guys. Enjoy this one, and then we'll get serious about this playoff. Don't forget to check out the merchandise. The link is in the description. You can browse and carouse all the different Always Irish gear. Make sure you head over there and get something for the next tailgate. Thanks for being here.